Hi, I'm Tom Nunnemaker. I uh, built the website and have a few updates for you. Um, first thing is I added the current METAR at the top of the member homepage. So this is pulled in every minute. And uh, if you're not used to reading these, it's pretty simple. Station, time, wind direction, wind speed, visibility, cloud cover, um, temperature in Celsius, dew point in Celsius. If you see an M, that's minus. A is the altimeter, 3006, and then remarks. So those are all available. If you want to just hit the decode METAR, that'll take you to the decoded version of that. And if you want to look at the terminal area forecast, the TAF, um, that'll tell you what all the forecast weather is. So kind of handy. Um, but the reason we're making this video is a walkthrough of the CANPAW calculator. So first of all, let's find it and then tell you what it is. So CANPAW is down here on flight planning. And it's the constant angle for non-precision approaches. And this is a calculator to figure that out. Uh, and basically the reason it was created is uh, the, the airlines came up with the idea of a stabilized approach. Because on a non-precision approach, uh, you fly to the final approach fix, um, and then you drop your nose, go down to the minimum descent altitude, level off, and then drive into the airport until you're in a safe position to land or hit your missed approach point. Hopefully you break out of the clouds. Well, the airlines didn't like those two pitch and power changes. They wanted it all stabilized. So um, you're, you're calculating that what angle do you need to fly at, and this also calculates what rate of descent do you need to have on your, your VVI. Um, but this tool does a lot more than that, so let's take a look at it. Um, first, you start out with the airport identifier, the airport ID. I'm going to zoom in and make it a little bit bigger. Um, so we can uh, use this picker if we want to. These are all the airfields within 75 nautical miles of Colorado Springs. You can see the distance, the um, fuel elevation, and then all the airport names. The, the bold ones are military. Uh, so say we want to go to Centennial, K-A-P-A. Yeah, you notice it just pulled in the uh, METAR for that and also the fuel elevation. I've got all the airports in Colorado loaded and a couple other states, not too many. It's a growing database, but if you uh, didn't have this automatically pulled in, then um, you'd have to manually type that up, you know, look it up yourself. Um, and if you want more information on this airport, click on the info link that takes it to the AirNav database. There's lots of information, the location, you know, where it is from the city, airport operations, communications, all the comm, all the nav aids, all the runways, and uh, some additional remarks, and then all the instant approaches. Uh, so here we have uh, all the approaches at Centennial. And then uh, here's that same decode me tower that we had on the, the home page. And again, this is uh, available, I think it's every minute. Um, but even if the airport's not in my database, uh, it'll still pull in the METAR if it can find it. So say we do like O'Hare, I grew up in Chicago, K-O-R-D, uh, there it is. So winds 240 at 12 gust 19. Now let's go uh, K-L-A-X, that's Los Angeles of course. Uh, so you see it's pulling it in, but it didn't pull in the field elevation. So we'd have to type that in. But let's just go back to Colorado Springs. There's the field elevation. Uh, temperature right now is 28 and the altimeter 3006. Now notice we don't have to put in a period because as soon as we leave this field it automatically puts it in. And then uh, the speed in knots or miles an hour, so if you're flying a T-41 and your gauges are mile, miles per hour, then you just select this and it'll change everything here to miles per hour. Obviously we can't change the knots because those are reported, uh, the winds are reported in knots and the distances are nautical miles because that's what you're going to see on approach plates. You're not going to see statute miles. Uh, so you can choose which one you want to use. Um, it's calculating the density altitude, the pressure altitude. And now let's look at the winds, uh, 7 knots, 150. So winds at 7. And these are 20 degrees off the runway heading, or the 17 runway. So we can do this. It calculates the headwind and crosswind components. So like for a, a one, you know, most small airplanes, or crosswind, say 15 knots is your limit. So you want to check that. Um, if you're going to some place that, that only has a, a, an approach in one direction and the winds are the opposite direction, you can actually set how many degrees off the runway heading it is um, all the way up to 180 degrees. So uh, assuming this was a tailwind, say 20 degrees off the runway is a tailwind, uh, it's going to tell you that this is a tailwind, kind of an alert, and that your ground speed is higher. Um, so now let's go. let's put this back to a normal one. Uh, so now if we go to Colorado Springs to the airport and we click on the uh, 17 approach, if we click here we'll download this approach plate 
Uh, so basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to get that constant angle. Now, uh, one way to do it is take the field elevation plus 50 feet for your threshold crossing height. If the uh, approach plate has a different threshold crossing height, you'll see TCH, you could use that amount. Uh, but we're just going to go 6187 plus 50 feet. So we're going to go 6237 and we're going to start at 8700 feet. So uh, 8700 feet. We can use this little calculator. Uh, 6237. So we have 2,463. Oops, 2,463 feet to lose, and it gets calculated. So you can't just type this in. Um, actually, I think you can. Let's see, 2463. Yeah, you can. All right. Um, and then the distance. So we got to add up the distance from the end of the runway to the final approach fix. So. 3.6 plus 2.4 is uh, what six? So 7.7 .7 miles. So let's put that in. Seven. 7.7 .7 miles. So it's a 3.1 degree uh, angle, and you're you want 357 feet per minute. Now this is uh, the angle is based off the distance and altitude. That's a uh, constant, but the descent rate uh, depends on your ground speed. So if we change the winds, say we make the winds uh, 15 knots this will change so let's watch and now it's at 320 if the winds are calm now it's 395 if we have a faster airplane now it's 549 or maybe even a jet you know 730 so uh, the angle is always the same uh, the de descent rate is going to be uh, you know based on your ground speed uh, another thing you can use this for uh, when we were in the KC 135 uh, or you know a, a bigger airplane cruising on the jet routes uh, you're, you might be wanting to, to plan your descent rate. So, uh, how would you do that? So, say your your ground speed's uh, 450 knots, and you have uh, 120 oops, 120 nautical miles to lose, and say you're up at uh, say you need to lose 30,000 feet. Uh, so, you're going to have a 2.36 de uh, degree descent gradient, and that you're going to be looking for about 1,875 feet per minute on your descent. Now it's going to tell you that it's red uh, because that's um, designed for an approach calculator. So anything over a thousand feet per minute, uh, they consider a little bit excessive. So that's going to be in red. Um, but for a decent calculator like this, you know, you can say, okay, I'm, I'm going to have a certain cruise speed on my descent. How far am I going to lose this altitude? So maybe I, I want to come down a little bit more uh, steeper. So maybe I'll start my descent 110 miles out. There's a two and a half degree. 100, there's a 2.83 and you know it's showing your, your descent rate so it's, it's a nice calculator to kind of plan your um, your arrivals too um, and then you know you can also check things like uh, like say at Leadville KLV XV I think it is yep so here's the, the Leadville weather um, so let's actually pull this up Leadville info they've got an instrument approach runway 1 6 so let's see, one three one six, and the winds are at three three zero, eleven gust twenty one. So let's call it. I will just add eleven plus twenty one is thirty two divided by two sixteen. So let's use sixteen knot average ground speed for the the winds, and we'll just go back to our smaller, well maybe a little bit faster. I don't think one seventy two is going to be going up there. Um, let's see, temperature is eighteen right here. Altimeter three zero four zero, and Let's see, angle from the runway heading. That's an interesting question because the runway is at 16, so 160, but the winds are at 330. So that's uh, almost a direct tailwind. So that's like 170 degrees off. So if you're coming in at uh, 90 knot indicated, um, there's your true because the density altitude is at 12,000 feet, and your ground speed is 124 knots. So you're going to have, even with, say, a three degree um, glide path, let's see, um, let me look it up, let me zoom in here. Okay, so you're at 13,000 feet, and let's go down to uh, field elevation plus 50, well, threshold crossing height's 51, there you go. So let's add 51 to the uh, field elevation, so actually, they have the runway elevation. Touchdowns on elevation 9934 plus 51, so 9985. 
five. And then we're starting at 13,000 feet. So we have 3,000 feet to lose. And that's 1.6 plus 3.1. So that's 4.7. 4.9, 6.9, 7.3, miles. 9.3 miles. And let's see. 90. Okay, so if you're coming in at 90 knots, there's your ground speed at 124. Your descent gradient's 3.05 degrees. So you're going to have to fly 670 feet per minute from the final approach fix all the way down to the end of the runway. So that's kind of how you use it. <coughs> Uh, crosswind is only 2.8 knots, so that's fine. And as you can see, it is a tailwind of almost 16 knots, so pretty heavy. Uh, but that's how you use it. Um, again, you can use it to check your crosswind components, uh, density altitudes. If your airplane, airplane service ceiling uh, can't handle it, say going up to Leadville on a hot day or Albuquerque or something. Um, and then the descent gradient for your non precision approaches. You can also use it. Uh, for your normal VFR flying. So for instance, if you go back to Colorado Springs, you like a 172 on final and you got seven knots, 20 degrees out the runway. Um, and let's see, Colorado Springs. Is that the Leadville or? Yeah, it's the Leadville, right? Uh, let's bring up the Colorado Springs ILS. So we had um, threshold across there, the so 6187, touchdown zone elevation is the same. So 6187 plus 50, I don't think they had one specified there. So 6187 plus 50 is 6237. And that's coming from 8,700 feet. So you're gonna lose 2463. And again, that's in, um, I think we did this, 3.6, 4, 5.3, 7.7 miles. So 352 feet is your three degree glide path. So if you're doing a VFR pattern, when you roll out on final, you should be looking for a, normally about a 350 foot per minute descent. And that, if you're, you know, that, that would put you on a three degree glide path. So that kind of gives you a rough idea of what you're looking for. Um, but anyway, hope this calculator helps. It's pretty useful, I think. If you have any questions, uh, additions, comments, whatever, let me know. Look forward to hearing from you. Thanks very much.